Hey there everybody! Today we're going to teach you everything you need to know about pressure switches. Pressure switches are generally found on pumps, either shallow well pumps, uh, jet pumps, air pumps, anything which needs to change state at a certain level of pressure. Today we're going to be working on the Flow Force shallow well jet pump, but most pressure switches are pretty similar in design. Put into simplest terms, a pressure switch will tell a pump when to turn on at a certain pressure, thereby increasing the pressure, and then when to turn off at another pressure. As you can imagine, this is a pretty necessary component for most pumps, and there's a lot of reasons why you might need to work on it. Whether your pressure switch isn't working correctly, or you want to adjust its ranges, we'll show you how to get it done. As important as this device is, you might be surprised to learn just how simple it is. Don't break out the soldering iron just yet, there's no integrated circuits or complicated electronics. All the repairs and modifications we're going to be showing you today can be carried out with just a wrench and a screwdriver. Before we start, make sure that the breaker to your pump is switched off, or it's unwired. Working with electricity is serious stuff, and only do this if you're 100% confident in your abilities. Now you're going to want to locate the pressure switch on your pump and remove the cover. Keep it handy because we're going to need it for later. First, let's start at the terminals. If your switch is giving you problems, like not turning on at all, this is probably where you want to look first. Make sure the wiring here is sound. Really quick, we're going to run through the process of wiring the pressure switch, just in case it's not. Again, I cannot stress enough how important it is to make sure that none of these wires are live and that everything is turned off. First, you're going to want to feed the motor wire through this hole down here. And then you're going to take the ground wire and screw it into one of these green screws. And then you're going to hook the positive on this side and the negative on this side. You're going to do the same thing with your power supply wire going in through this side, ground here, positive here, negative here. Try powering everything on. If it works, great. If not, let's move on to the contacts. The contacts are where the switch actually switches on the power to these wires. You can try cleaning the connections here or see if they're moving properly under different pressure conditions. If they're not, you might have to replace the entire pressure switch. Next, we have the range adjustment screw, which controls the pressure on this spring, which in turn controls the resistance on this diaphragm. It's the pressure of the water or air behind the diaphragm, which will activate or deactivate the contacts and turn the pump on or off. You can change the range at which this diaphragm activates through, you guessed it, the range adjustment screw. This pressure switch actually has two range adjustment screws. The first one will raise the cut on and off pressure, whereas the second one will only raise the cut off pressure. Remember when I said you'd need the cover? Now is the time. Most pressure switches will have instructions on adjusting this screw on the cover. Mine is on the inside. For this specific pressure switch, it doesn't give you any detailed information on how many turns will increase the pressure by how much. So you'll have to experiment with it and test how much the water pressure will go up when it cuts off or when it cuts on. Basically, to adjust it, you just screw the nut in more or less, depending on what kind of modification you need. Look at that pressure. Now, when the pressure reaches its new specified range, it'll push on this diaphragm, which will push against the piston, which will open the contacts, turning the pump off. When the pressure drops below the specified range, the diaphragm will close the contacts, turning the pump on. That's about all there is to know about pressure switches. When you hook your pump back up, look into your installation manual to see if you need to prime it with water before you turn it on. I hope you found this video informative. If you did, remember to hit that like and subscribe button, and leave us a comment telling us what you want to see in the future. Thanks. Have a good one.